a J Mix exclusive. Hey everybody, it's J Mix here with TupacNation.net. And I just want to say a big thank you for all the comments and emails. And I wanted to let you know that I read every single email that you send me and I appreciate the love and support. I know there's a lot of you that have been waiting a long time to hear Kurt Part 6 and I promise you that one's coming soon. But for now, because of all the mass emails I've got concerning Frank Alexander, I wanted to put out the truth of his death and I wanted to touch upon the actual facts of the case. There's a lot of reporters out there and, and there's a lot of people speculating on the way Frank died and I feel that now is the time to let people know what really happened. So recently I got the opportunity to talk with RJ Bond, Frank's close friend of 16 years and business partner, director and producer of the Tupac assassination movies, who was unfortunately there the next day after the incident with Frank. And I wanted to use this time this week to clear up any rumors or speculation regarding the death of Frank Alexander. I appreciate your patience. And without any further intro, I'm going to get right into the interview with RJ Bond. Hey, RJ, it's been a while since we talked. How you holding up, buddy? Thanks for asking that. Um, I don't think there's a lot of people that, that actually understand Frank's and my relationship. Um... Frank had a lot of people that claimed to be his partner, quote unquote, his, you know, his brother, quote unquote, he used to hang with people and we used to do, you know, we used to talk about doing business together. Frank would, you know, Frank would shake hands with anybody and would do business with anybody who he thought would be, uh, you know, a, a good p partnership or a good venture. That being said, probably 90% of the people that he talked about doing things with, you know, and it, that's just the regular way of things. It, it just it doesn't work out for one reason or another. So there was a lot of people who always thought they had stuff going with Frank. I did have stuff going with Frank, and, and for the time that I've known Frank, uh, I knew him for the better part of 16 years uh, from the day we met at the Orange County Fair. And um, we were, to say that we were close, to say that we were brothers is probably an understatement. There wasn't, there wasn't much of anything I didn't know about Frank, say probably the last six months of this year, um, and that was a bit perplexing to me. But that wasn't also unusual because there was a period of time where Frank and I didn't talk. It was pretty close to a year, and it wasn't that there was anything wrong. We just, uh, we just days go by, and we just hadn't caught up with each other. When I moved to Kentucky. Uh, I used to live in L.A. When I moved to Kentucky, Frank and I talked a little less and a little less. And right about 2005, we started talking again on a real regular basis. And I would say that probably from 2007 till, you know, six months ago, um, there wasn't a single day that Frank and I didn't talk on the phone. We try to get, get to seeing each other once or, you know, once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks in some cases. Um, but there wasn't long, dry spells where we didn't see each other one way or another. I mean, this is a guy that I shared hotel rooms with while we went on the road promoting the movies. We did interviews together. Um, we had to pretty much be in, inside each other's head most of the time because for him to understand the work that I was doing and, and with the assassination movies and the theories that were, that were being put out there, and for me to be inside his head as a witness, you know, you have to be that close. So there just wasn't anything that we didn't really know. Um, I can tell you that of all the people that he knew, there was only four people that were at his home the day, that, the day after the day that he died. There was only four people there. One of them was his wife. One of them was his wife's daughter. I was the third one, and there was one other person that was there. So a lot of people can talk about being that close to Frank. I was that close to Frank. And as a result of that, I've taken it very hard. It's, 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 a, it's a horrible loss. And, and more importantly, I don't, I don't really understand the reasons why he did it. And the, that's kind of the hardest part is that lack of understanding. Can you tell us how you were notified? I was contacted by a family member of his uh, Junius the Dutch is his name. Um, that's what his stage name is, anyway. Um, he called me 
Monday morning, it was Pacific time, about 6, maybe 5.45 in the morning. Price incident happened about 5.45 Sunday afternoon, and I was contacted about 6 o'clock in the morning um, that, that following morning. And I was just actually getting to the office because I go to work early on, on Monday mornings. And uh, when I got the notification, he was very upset when he talked to me. And he said, RJ, I got to talk to you. And I said, what's going on? And, and he said, it's about Frankie. And when he told me that, I knew it wasn't good because I, I talked to this guy pretty much on a pretty regular basis, but not at 6 o'clock in the morning. Most, uh, most hip-hop musicians don't, don't do anything at 6 o'clock in the morning. He called me and um, told me it was about Frankie. And my first thought was that Frank had had a heart attack. I, I knew it wasn't good. And the reason being is because a few years ago he had a heart attack. And we didn't expect it. And I was, of course, there at the hospital. I flew from Kentucky the next day uh, to be with him at the hospital. So it wasn't really one of those situations where I would have ever imagined it was what it ended up being, but I thought, okay, he had another heart attack. And I said, well, you know, what? tell me what happened. And he said, RJ, it's bad, RJ, it's bad, RJ, it's bad. And he just kept repeating it. And for some reason, the idea of a fatal heart attack, I don't think that registered with me either. I think heart attack, you know, you hear people have them all the time, and they're fine. They, you know, go to the hospital, and they're fine. A fatal heart attack, that was another matter altogether, and that's where I started drawing my suspicion. Um, and then I said, what happened? And he told me that, that it, looked like, it looked like Frank had shot himself. Well, I was not expecting that. There, I could have woke up with my head stapled to the carpet and not been more surprised than I was about that. And we turned around, and I said, what happened with, uh, you know, what's going on with, with Debbie's wife? And he said, she's taking it really hard, man. Well, I didn't have Debbie's number on me, um, so I actually ended up just jumping in the car about 6.15 in the morning, and by about 8 o'clock I was at Frank's house because he lives quite a ways away. So that's how I found out. I got down there at like I said, early, early morning. And uh, as I got there, originally, Debbie's daughter, I got to their, their compound, and they have kind of a compound with a big iron gate. Um, and when I got there, you can't just walk up to the house. Um, when I got there, Debbie's daughter answered the, the gate and had said, you know, asked who I was. I said who I was, and she immediately said that, you know, Debbie wasn't seeing anybody. But once I explained who I was, she talked to Debbie, and Debbie, of course, invited me to come in. Um, Debbie is obviously distraught um, at that point. You know, she just was just this, just devastated, I guess would just be the, the best word for it. She was just out of sorts. And when she told me what happened and told me as it was, I think sitting there at the house, um, I think I was in a little bit of denial because there have been times I'd been at Frank's house. I'd say to this place all the time. There were times I was at Frank's house and Frank wasn't there. So it really didn't seem like Frank wasn't there. Uh, I thought, you know, in my mind, I guess maybe I just thought he was downstairs. But when she asked me if I wanted to see, uh, see the, his office was where the, uh, uh, where the incident took place, if I wanted to see it, um, I said, sure. Um, and we went there, and it was just like a 500-pound wrecking ball hit me, just knocked the wind out of me, uh, you know, I lost it, I fell down on my knees and just completely lost it, and it took a while to get past that, you know, I don't think I'll ever be past it completely, but that's, that's what happened, so we, I saw that, and we went back upstairs, and we talked, and, and, you know, some other people came over, and uh, when, when they came, I did a little more talking about it, found out a little bit more what had happened. I hadn't been plugged in with Frank in the past couple of weeks. We talked on the phone a couple of times, but I really hadn't been plugged in with him too much in the past couple of weeks to know exactly what he was doing. 
And that was kind of a little odd because Frank and I would always keep, keep up on each other about what was happening. I was in post-production. I was wrapping up a new film that I'm working on. It's Tupac-related, but Frank wasn't involved with it, not directly anyway. And so as I was paying more attention to getting that finished up, uh, we just weren't talking much. I just had my head down, and we weren't talking much. So that was kind of the that was kind of the big the big thing. Um, we hadn't talked much. I didn't know what was going on, but I got filled in a little bit more about what he was doing in his last few days. Can you tell the fans a little bit about the events that unfolded on that fateful day? Well, I know that the last the last few days that Frank. He had, done an, he had done an interview. It was, I think, the This Is 50 interview. He had done that like a week earlier. Um, Frank was in L.A. a lot. Um, he was trying to get some new work done on his book. He was working with a guy on, uh, not rewriting, but I guess revising his book, Got Your Back. He was working with the sales agent on Before I Wake. Uh, they had several deals in the works that she was getting for him. It, it, it's always on Fuse TV, if you ever want to check out Before I Wake. It's always on Fuse TV. But in this particular case, uh, she was renewing the contract for that. So that was money in his pocket. And Frank always loved money in his pocket. So he was sticking around in L.A., kind of be bopping around, and he was visiting with friends, uh, you know, no alarm, um, just, doing what, just doing what he did. That Sunday, I hadn't talked to him. I think I talked to him Thursday or Friday before, uh, and he told me he was in L.A., and he kind of followed up on the This Is 50 interview and told me how it worked real well. And, you know, he was very happy with it. And um, Sunday, apparently, he had gone to the show and went and saw the movie Pain and Gain with Mark Wahlberg and The Rock. And that was Frank. Frank always loved to go to the movies, and he wasn't afraid to go by himself. And typical to Frank fashion, he would go in and, see one movie and he'd stay for three others. In this particular case he didn't do that though. This I guess this time he just went to the movie, saw the one movie, came home and the rest is real you know, real speculation is really just based on what his wife you know, what his wife said happened. What were you told by Frank's wife had happened that fateful Sunday? I was getting it in bits and pieces because she was so hysterical. And I'm sure that the story has changed a little bit since then, just because you remember things, the more objective you get about it. She was in quite a state, so I was getting it in, in pieces. Apparently, they had been having a fight. He and his wife had been having a fight. And um, apparently, there were words that were exchanged, and Frank, according to... to his wife um, was very upset, and apparently shot himself in front of her. There was no third-party involvement, like a lot of the websites would want to insinuate that somebody else had something to do with it. Um, according to his wife, he he shot himself right in front of her. Beyond that, it's hard to get a fair read on what what really happened in terms of what she's relaying and I don't necessarily want to get into all the details of it just because you know it is it is something that's sensitive to 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 the family and sensitive to to his wife um, but he, that was what she told me that uh, that he had shot himself in front of her here's the thing they were having a fight it was pretty well known by most of the people that were close to Frank that he was having a very contentious relationship with his wife, but that they were fighting all the time. I'd heard several of the phone calls that they had been fighting. She threatened him. Uh, he was ready to leave. He was ready to go. I mean, I hate to sound I hate to sound like I'm trying to draw any parallels to any other person that may have had this kind of a problem, but I guess it kind of runs the same way. You know, it's a damn thing. If uh, you want to leave and you want to get away and somebody doesn't want you to go, somebody doesn't want you to leave, you know, it, you know if, if you're going to leave, maybe you're leaving on somebody else's terms and not necessarily on your own terms. But they'd had a fight, and there was a lot of anger and a lot of hostility there. 
And, you know, a, according to her, you know, he went out on his terms, uh, that, that it wasn't, uh, it was an intentional act, it was a deliberate act. But I think there's a lot of people who don't understand that. I think there's a lot of people that question whether or not it was a deliberate act or whether it was actually an accident. Either way, it doesn't really matter, but, uh, but I think there's some, there's some question there. In fairness to people that truly love Frank and truly don't believe that it was as clearly defined as his wife put it out there. Why do you stress that it was a deliberate act? Well, I mean, it, it, it's clear from all indications that Frank shot himself. There's no question in the investigators' minds who I really wish to condemn uh, Riverside Police Department and the, you know, the bozo show that's going on down there um, because I have not been talked to about this. There's been a few people that haven't been talked to that haven't been interviewed. I think it's very easy and simple to wrap a case up and close it and not ask any more questions about why it happened or what the motive was for it. I mean, there's one thing to kill yourself, and there's another thing to say that somebody drove you to it because there's a lot of different ways that a person can, can go out. Clearly, uh, you know, the GSR and the, the, the evidence points to the fact that Frank died at his own hand, but by the same token, that doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't an accident. There are a lot of people, myself included, who believe that there, Frank may not have been aware that there was uh, a round in the chamber when he put the gun to his head. Maybe he was, you know, playing around. Maybe he was threatening to do something and, and didn't realize that, that he had, uh, you know, had a round in the chamber. You know, that I know that he would have known the gun was loaded because Frank had been around guns for so many years that the weight of the gun is completely different when it's unloaded versus when it's loaded. So there's no way I can tell you as we stand here today that Frank didn't know the gun was loaded. But there's a question as to whether or not he knew the gun had been cocked and whether or not there was one in the chamber when he did what he did. Sometimes when we play with guns, which we tell our children not to do, and that's the lesson to take home here, kids, you know, when we screw around with guns, you know, sometimes accidents happen. And I think that's what it was. I think it was an accident. Um, you know, yes, Frank died by his own hand, but by the same token, I think that he also, I, I'm not sure that he intended to do what he did. There's no, there's no reason for it that, you know, he had too many other positive things that were going on in his life. And I share that sentiment with a lot of his family and many of his close friends. I'm going to ask you to speculate here, but in your opinion, is there a possibility that it could have just been an attention play that went horribly wrong? Um, yeah, I, you know, I think, I think again, you know, um, I think that, that any time somebody makes a show of something, I think that, you know, you can certainly have a loaded weapon and if you don't have one in the chamber it's not cleared and you put the gun to your head chances are you may not shoot yourself but if you have a loaded chamber and you decide to do that I think that uh, there's a possibility that that uh, that it that it could have been um, I don't know why he would have done that but, but you know, again, it is all speculation. I just, all I can tell you with absolute certainty is I don't think it's as cut and dry as what the police put it out there as, and I don't think it's as cut and dry as his wife makes it out to be, whether it be intentional or otherwise. I think it was an accident. I don't think he meant to do it. I just isn't, that's not the way Frank, Frank was. I mean, Frank talked about suicide a lot. Anybody that knows Frank knows that Frank talked about suicide because he wanted to kill himself after the death of Tupac. But the bottom line was that he didn't. And no matter how low you get, you know, you can entertain those thoughts, but you just don't do it. And if he didn't do it after that, why in God's name would he do it now? I want to give a special thanks to the members of TupacNation.net and all my YouTube viewers and subs. Just to let you know, Kurt Part 6 will be out 
in less than seven days. I thank you for your patience. In a couple weeks after the Kurt interview has been posted, RJ and I will discuss the initial reports that came out from the family and the status of the assassination films. Stay tuned. One love. And I'll see you on TupacNation.net. A Dream Mix exclusive.